And thus begins their attempt to redeem Sadako. I'm not really liking <laughs> where this is going, but it kind of goes into the theory that I had with Sadako in this particular series. But yeah, that's my impression on episode 10 of Higurashi Satsu. So let's jump into it. So the episode opens up with Oishi pretty much trying to throw out a bunch of trash around Sadako's house, obviously trying to entice this anger from Tape Hojo. And yeah, that's when we have this first little glimpse of essentially the hesitance that Sadako is starting to have now that, you know, Uncle Hojo is a good person. <laughs> this is still weird for me. It is kind of odd to have this aspect of Sadako kind of snapping out of it caused by the one guy that we probably hated the most from the old series. But yeah, him pretty much embracing her and saying that he's going to protect her and that he's he's fighting back this urge to snap and attack people, which would obviously cause them problems. It, it That embrace is that point in which we're finally seeing Sadako have like this... Yeah, it, it symbolizes it with the cracking that's happening, but obviously she does appreciate what she has now. And that's kind of seen throughout the entire episode we see these little moments where she's cooking him food or something like that and she's she's happy like she's not showing the sign of like well what am i going to do next like what's my next step that hint of her planning out her next steps was not present in this entire scenario she's constant constantly kind of lost in this paradise that she's kind of created herself which is having family and having Uncle Hojo there with her and enjoying life, even though in the background we see Keiichi working with everybody to separate them, which is that sadness that I think is kind of expressed through Oishi's comments, which, again, is the similar issue where you're kind of seeing those same scenes again, but thankfully only one of them felt pretty much like a waste of time, which was seeing this whole scene of everybody banned in front of the uh, CWS, but all these other scenes has Oishi you know, inner dialogue talking about how, you know, he doesn't realize Keiichi is doing an incredible job here, but he doesn't realize all he's really doing is separating these two. He's not actually helping anybody. But again, he's being manipulated by Sadako. Yeah, he also admits the fact that even at the meeting, he's like, I could probably tell them the truth, but <laughs> this is my only chance to really find who the culprit is behind the death of his friend. So he's going to let Keiichi essentially cause this chaos because he's being manipulated by the curse itself. Yeah, I was really curious to see how they would end up handling the whole situation with the CWS visiting uh, the Hojos. And yeah, obviously, when when they do announce that they're going to go out there, that's when Oishi kind of steps in and says, you know, I got to... It's funny that he actually tells his partner, he's like, I got to prevent them from getting Tepe. Like, this is something that I can't allow to happen. The guy's like, what are you talking about? He's like, don't worry about it. And yeah, sure enough, he takes the CWS guy there and that's when he essentially escorting there is to explain the situation. So now the CB CWS actually knows what's happening. And he's conflicted because he's like, you know, I don't know what to do because the entire town wants to get rid of this guy. But you're I'm seeing the situation and this problem's not here. And obviously they're weaving the aspect that it's the town itself that's bullying them. Um, he doesn't know what to do. But then that's when she steps in and says, you know, just hand it over to me. I'll handle it. Just I'll take responsibility for it. You can wash your hands of it and step away. And that's his whole plan is just to continue this whole cycle of everybody going after um, Uncle Hojo. And this is where things kind of get weird because obviously we knew that based on the telling of the story in the previous season that Uncle Hojo lives. But yet right when <laughs> everything kind of calms down, she basically drugs him to sleep him so that he she can call everybody and tell them, you know, look, yeah. Uh, they took Hojo away, or Uncle away, and I'm fine now. I'll go to the festival with you all. Uh, he awakens from this kind of drug that he's been given, and she immediately says, you know, I need you to be out of the way. I need everybody to think that you're gone, and that's when she goes to kill Hojo, or Uncle Hojo. And this is a weird thing because I knew that it wasn't going to happen just because, again, in the previous season, we seen Uncle Hojo attack Keiichi. So... When she started having inner conflict, I'm like, okay, that's where this is going to be, you know, his, he's going to be saved from. And yeah, sure enough, she goes to kill Uncle and she starts conflicting with herself. And I'm like, okay, here we go. <laughs> Here's where they're going to weave in the redemption arc for Sadako. She is not liking that her herself wants to kill Uncle when she loves Uncle now. She She loves her Uncle now. She's been through so much with him she doesn't want to end his life 
And yeah, you have the one eye is the witch eye and the other eye is her eye and she's conflicted with herself. And that eventually shatters their reality and they are taken back to where Iwa is at and they're fighting it out in there. So this is a point which we established that there is a witch Sadako and then there is a the regular Sadako and she's interconflicting with herself. It, it, it kind of lays it out as if it's like a thing of you know, this is what we chose to do. Um, your emotions that are from be- before this that doesn't need to be here. Like, you, your outdated emotions that are shouldn't be in this reality. Like, you should have left that behind when you came to this existence. This is what we chose to do. You shouldn't be caring about people. Like, this is not what a witch needs to do. And that's, again, something that they, you know, echoed with Rika's situation. That at some point she realized that she was a witch and that she needed to discard that because that witch aspect was her not caring about the lives around her until she got to that promised land. Like, I don't, I I need to bottle up my emotions as I see my mother die over and over again. I don't need to associate with her. Um, basically killing those emotions that normal people would feel with seeing the loss of their friends. And even with Rika's situation, way late into it, it was a frustration of that she failed. It was never really, it never really seemed like a frustration of, I seen them die again. It was a frustration of, crap, I failed again. That was her issue. That was her becoming the witch. And that, again, is kind of equally uh, shown with, with Sadako here, is that she's, she's fighting with that witch side that wants her to just discard people because she needs to seek out this promised land that she wants of her and Rika. But it was interesting because she not only says, I don't want to kill Uncle... But she also says, I don't want to kill anybody else. So again, this is one of those moments of the hypocrisy, I guess. The double standard. Like, you you, you've, you started this whole situation. This is what, And this is where I'm going to get my problem with this whole situation. The only way that I can see them, I guess, not making me angry about this redemption. Because it's going to happen. This is, this is, they've already established it. They've established at this point, don't worry, Sadako was not bad. It was the witch side of her. So, redemption is only in, let's get rid of Witch, Witch Sadako, and everybody's happy. And I don't necessarily, like I said, I don't necessarily think that's a a great way of redeeming her, because Sadako started it. Like, I don't believe that she was a witch back then, unless they establish the moment that she met Yula, y- Yua, and said, you have this opportunity to reset things and get to that world you want, bam, insert witch self and she never had control since then no she it 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 wasn't until the progress and again that that it's it's a case of unless they can establish that those bad points in her was always the witch like yeah technically you always seen her eyes turn red and that's typically the the symbolism of the witch taking over like even in that recent case where uh meon the meon arc rika came to keichi and said something really unlike uh, Rika. And that was almost like her witch self coming back again and saying, we're all dead anyways. It's it's over. You messed up. <laughs> we're already screwed. So I don't know. Inle- unless they can really portray that well, it's going to be hard for me to follow that mindset. Because again, we didn't really see the eyes until a little bit into it. She'd already established she was, you know, again, you know, taking out Rena and stuff. So... I don't know. We'll we'll see. I'm going to struggle really hard with it, but it does seem like that is the route that they're going with, that there is this other side of her that is is pulling her through this situation, and it's not her doing. I don't agree. I think it's her doing. (laughs) Yeah, while they're fighting, Iwa says, you know, it was a great decision. It was a good decision to to pick you to do this. You've you've given me a lot of uh, great moments. You've entertained me so much. And she says, the reward I'm going to give you is allowing you to remove those emotions, which indicates removing the side of Rika that is, again, the outdated emotions that she doesn't need in doing this. So it's like, I've been, I've been, I gave you this ability to become basically the witch. You became the witch. Now we need to discard your old self and let you just be a total destruction force that's just going to go through all th- this whole situation. But yeah, the symbolizing of it is, is the witch self shooting the regular Sadako, and that's where we're assumption is that that point it's full-on witch mode at this point from now on um this is and this is the followed by the weird part 
Again, we established in the previous season that Keichi is lured by Sadako to go to her house and takes him to Satoshi's room, and then he's attacked by Hojo. And I thought it was a thing of her manipulating Uncle into believing that Keichi was the curse to come get them, and he attacks him. And then at this point, it's self-defense at that point. But the problem is that she does kill Hojo in the end. When she when the witch takes over, she kills Hojo, and she then beats him with a bat. So that covers... So I, I guess what they're going to end up doing is this idea that she'll lure Keichi there, and then she will kill Keichi. And what we've seen in the previous season of Keichi coming in there being attacked by Uncle is really what everybody else thinks happened, which is that Keichi went in there, was attacked by Uncle Hojo, and they both died in the end. But in fact, it was... Uncle was already dead. Keiichi went in there. Sadako killed him. Made it look like they got in a fight. So, very weird. I, I, it was, it was. Not that it bothers me, but it is one of those things of like, wait, no, what was? What, Hojo was there. <laughs> doesn't doesn't make any sense. So, and it, and it definitely could be one of those things. Well, technically, it did show Hojo standing, so he was alive. But it could be one of those things where he kind of appeared there, or he came there. Sadako hit him with the bat. You know, he hit once, and then from then on, he just thought that this guy on the ground was the guy that hit me, and he starts bashing like crazy. So, but yeah, that's my that's my thoughts on episode ten of Higurashi when they cry. Satsu again, I'm conflicted. <laughs> I don't like this redemption arc. I, I was kind of hoping we would get to the the meeting point again, but I'm, I'm guessing next episode is you know the the end of this arc, and then we can go into again the. I'm not looking forward to it. I realize I didn't mention this last time, but yeah, technically after this, once this is over, we'll probably see Oishi go, um, probably be told that it was Rika. So we'll probably get the whole scene of Oishi going to the festival and taking out everybody. Uh, we'll have the conclusion of Keichi coming there. And then we will have to go into the arc that I forgot was before we get into them confronting Sadako in the classroom. And that was the... <laughs> Uh, performing of the ritual on Rika's. <laughs> so that's not going to be cool. I'm, I'm curious how they'll play that out. I hope they don't play out the entire scene over again because that was a very, very drawn-out scene. But a lot of that drawn-out aspect of the previous season when they portrayed that was Rika thinking about it the entire situation. So we'll probably get more of a perspective of Sadako before then. But this is the witch self. There's, it shouldn't be an inner conflict. It should just be straight up, I'm going to break Rika. And then continue on. So hopefully in the next episode we will get that back to the that stopping point that we got in the first season. So we'll see. That's my thoughts. Again, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like down below. Comment. Let me know what's thought of the episode. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share this video if you can. And support us on Patreon if you can. And y'all take care.